Hi, everyone. This is Heather Lawtonin from the Flourish Academy, where our goal is to empower, educate, and elevate you to create a life that you love through the art and business of photography. In this video, we are going to create a shallow depth of field using the radial filter inside of Lightroom. But first, make sure you check out our sponsor, ymcamera.com, for all of your photography needs. Now, before we begin, what I'd like to do is demonstrate a few key features of the radial filter tool. You can access this tool by pressing shift M on your keyboard. And the first thing I like to do is hold down alt or option on the keyboard and click reset in order to reset all of the sliders. I'm going to begin by just clicking and dragging from the center of the image in order to create this radial filter. Now what I'm going to do is pull down on the exposure significantly just so you can see what's happening with this tool. If I press H on my keyboard, I will show the edit pins and if I press H again, I will hide them. This can be useful to see the impact of the filter on your image. Let's take that feather all the way down to zero and you can see you have a very hard transition between the filter and then obviously taking it all the way up to 100, you have a much softer transition. Pressing O on the keyboard will show the ruby light overlay. Again, if we take this feather down, then you can see that a little more clearly. Pressing O again will remove that overlay. I'm going to press H to show those edit pins and show you a few things about adjusting this filter. If you click on any of the edit pins and drag in or out, you can obviously change the size of the filter. But did you know that if you hold down Alt or Option on the keyboard and click and drag, you can pull just one side of the filter. This is tremendously useful when you don't want this filter to be symmetrical. Holding down Shift on the keyboard and clicking and dragging this filter will pull it all in at the same rate and out as well. But what we're going to attempt here is to create a more shallow depth of field. I'm going to press I on my keyboard so that you can see my EXIF data. I shot this at 5.6 to make sure that everyone was in focus, but my background is a little more in focus than I'd like. Now, naturally, I could have pulled them away from that background, but they wanted a photo in front of our pond, which I lovingly refer to as the Redneck Yacht Club. Now, obviously, exposure down is not what we're going for here, and certainly we want a smoother transition, so I'm going to increase the feather. But what I'm going to do next is pull down on the clarity, down on the sharpness, and down on the contrast just a little bit. And if you don't think this is making a difference, we can press this switch in order to turn this filter off and then turn it back on. Now I'm going to press H in order to hide those edit pins so you can see this a little bit better. There it is off and there it is on. Will this ever replace shooting at a more shallow depth of field or pulling your subject away from the background? Of course not. The best way to get a shallow depth of field is to shoot with a shallow depth of field. Let's zoom in at a one-to-one -one ratio so that you can see how this impacted the branches on the willow tree. What you're seeing right now is with the adjustment and there it is off. So it did make a difference. How much you choose to change these sliders is a personal preference. I would not recommend usually ever taking the clarity to negative 100 because it starts to blur the pixels a little bit too much. Now stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to take this one step further. I'll see you then.